BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to BBOR, the home of True Crime Talk Radio and your premier destination for unsolved mysteries, criminal psychology, and exploring the dark side of cyberspace. My name is Ned DeHaan, and I am your host as well as the creator of Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube, and regular contributor to the Zodiac Killer channel. And a great way to support these shows is just by listening to some more content. But you can also go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse, written by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. Let the show begin. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Monday, another Zodiac Monday. Welcome to the show. How's everybody doing? I hope everyone had a good weekend. Just a couple of quick announcements and reminders before we truly begin. And the first one is that there will be more short episodes released here on Black Box Online Radio via the YouTube Shorts page. And they will also be shared on Instagram and Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And of course, there's Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram. So please look out for some of those in the near future. And... At the end of the month, there is going to be a hiatus for Black Box Online Radio, one of the first times, maybe not the first time, but one of the few times that there has been a hiatus for the channel, and I'm hoping that BBO War is going to evolve into a different type of program, doing some more things with live streams and visuals, but I'm always glad to talk to you guys about these true crime stories, and if you'd like to follow along with all of these discussions, you can hit the like button and subscribe. Great ways to help out the channel. And you can also go through some of the links in the description box. And one of them is for buymeacoffee.com. Buymeacoffee.com slash blackboxnet88 allows you to make a donation or contribution to help support the show. And anybody who makes a donation will get a shout out on Zodiac Monday. And firstly, I would like to give a shout out to a regular supporter on buymeacoffee.com named Batman66 who sent me something that I had never seen before, and it relates to the Zodiac Killer's Lake Berryessa stabbing that took place on September 27th of 1969. The Zodiac Killer was a serial killer who operated in California in the late 1960s, and whatever happened before or after that is anybody's guess. It is still a mystery. There are lots of theories and hypotheses out there. But one time, and only one time to the best of our knowledge, the Zodiac Killer actually committed a crime wearing a hooded costume that had a circle with a cross going through it, and it had black clip-on sunglasses, it resembled an executioner's hood, as well as other types of black masks. And Batman 66 sent me something called The Clue of the Velvet Mask, which is a Nancy Drew mystery story. And I would like to read read to you the description of this mystery. And yes, it does involve a character named Ned. A masquerade party at the Hendricks Mansion quickly turns into a mystery when Nancy and her favorite date, Ned Nickerson, spy a stranger about to climb the rose trellis to the second story. Who is this enigmatic man in the black cloak and the exotic woman in the Javanese costume? Are they members of a gang of wily thieves who sneak into parties given by wealthy people and steal jewels and art treasures? And why is the owner of the black velvet hooded mask that Ned finds in the Hendricks garden so desperate to get it back. To find answers, Nancy and her friend George devise a daring plan. The two girls switch identities. George soon discovers that while it is exciting to play amateur detective, it can be dangerous to masquerade as Nancy Drew. And I think there is um, a little bit of AI going on in the creation of that book description. Doesn't seem like those were the word choices that would have been completely written by a human. But this could be another possible inspiration for the Zodiac Killer's costume. And the reason why I focus in on this a lot is because we are really trying to find the influences that created the Zodiac Killer's persona. After the discovery on the Halloween card that was mailed on October 27th of 1970, where 
people have been able to track down certain possible inspirations, such as the Tim Hole comics and Red Rider, it really became apparent that people, including us, might actually be able to figure out the direct inspirations for how and why the Zodiac Killer was creating this type of persona, the type of persona that he chose to create. And because I just read to you something from the Nancy Drew Mysteries, I think it's only fitting that I could go to a challenge question that was proposed by the Nancy Drew channel for this episode of the Zodiac Killer News Report. I would like to more or less use it as a Q&A session to respond to some things from different parts of the internet about the Zodiac. And Nancy Drew asked a challenge question to the audience. Why did the Zodiac Killer do what he did? Now, I think that the full context should be why did the Zodiac Killer commit murders? Why did he brag about them in phone calls? Why did he leave little clues at the crime scene, such as the car door at Lake Berryessa? Why did he choose to write letters where he took credit for his crimes? Why did he choose to send proof of his crimes, such as the Paul Stein uh, shirt swatch? Why did he choose to create ciphers and cryptograms that had his identity but not give away his name and the actual solutions to these ciphers? Why? Like, why did the Zodiac Killer do what he did? And the reason why I wanted to read this off is twofold. The first one is because I was talking about the Nancy Drew mystery of the Velvet Mask, but also because it's a multiple choice question. And the choices are, number one, the Zodiac hated women. Number two, the Zodiac wanted to terrorize the community. Number three, the Zodiac was seeking revenge against the police. Number four, the Zodiac was seeking importance. And number five, the Zodiac was completely crazy. And the one that I had selected was the Zodiac was seeking importance. And that was um, the most highly voted one, 53, 52%, excuse me, 52% of the poll um, responders chose that one. And I think that there's a very particular reason for it, because it goes to show that the Zodiac was doing this perhaps for egoism, for a self-serving reason, or just trying to prove that he was smarter than everybody else. And some of the evidence for this is found in the Zodiac Killer's 408 cipher, the first cryptogram, when it says, I like killing people because it's so much fun, it's even more fun than hunting wild game in the forest, because man is the most dangerous animal of all. And I always go back to this one because that just goes to show that if it means that he's the hunter of the most dangerous animal of all, then that means that he is at the top of the hierarchy, the top of the pyramid, the top of whatever type of food chain that we're trying to think of. And I say food chain metaphorically, but the Zodiac is trying to act like he is the most dangerous animal that's even more dangerous than man himself. So I think that it was often about, I often think that it's about trying to create a type of self-satisfying image. But there is evidence for all of these other choices. Now, as far as the Zodiac hated women, I've had this discussion with several people in the comments sections, whether it's in one of these Zodiac Killer Facebook groups, or perhaps even here in the comments section on BBO War, where some people point out that, okay, there is no direct evidence that the Zodiac hated women. The Zodiac was not a serial killer such as Jack the Ripper, who targeted only women. In fact, the Zodiac Killer never once killed a lone female in any of the confirmed crimes. Many unconfirmed crimes relate to the murders of lone females, but the Zodiac did not target lone females, so that's a big strike against that. And also, you notice certain things with serial killers who had to have hatred of women. One example would be William Suff, the Lake Elsinore killer, who would actually do something that the killer of Sherry Joe Bates threatened to do, cutting off women's lady parts and depositing them for the town to see, for the community to see. Those are the types of activities that I see from somebody who hates women, someone who's going to mutilate the genitals and breasts of a woman. But also, also, I think that there is something that we can explore in in contrast, because as I said, there is evidence that the Zodiac Killer did hate women. And earlier this year, I appeared as a guest on the Citizen Detective podcast, and I was um, discussing this with the other panelists, and Mike Morford is also a co-host of that, and Druzer is a frequent contributor over there. I was discussing some of his comments about the Zodiac recently. But one of the other panelists was Dr. Lee Meller, who made some comments not about the Zodiac Killer, but about the Phantom Killer, a serial killer who operated in Texarkana in 1946. 
And what he said was that if we look at a serial killer like that with a Freudian lens, we have to first accept that it is not a hard science, but you have a serial killer who's going to target couples that are parked in cars at lover's lanes, go after the male victim first, and then have access to the female victim. And I'm sharing this with you because the Zodiac Killer did all of those things, targeted multiple people together, like a male and a female together. The Zodiac targeted couples parked in cars at lover's lanes, and the Zodiac went for the male victim first. And even if they weren't parked in the car at Lake Berryessa, the Zodiac attacked Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard, and Brian Hartnell was attacked first. And in terms of Freudian psychology, it could be like someone has a hatred of their father, and the hatred of a father, like they want to overpower the male victim. Maybe they had a very domineering father and a very cold or emotionally abusive mother, and they want to dominate the father and then have access to the mother. And yes, it, it's purely based on interpreting a set of clues and interpreting a set of behaviors. And if that's the case, then there are always possibilities that the interpretations could be wrong. But that just shows that there could be a type of hatred of women where this person wants to overpower women, and they want to dominate women in a more aggressive and flawless way. So I think about these things from time to time, and as long as the case remains unsolved, I think that there's a certain value in trying to interpret the pieces of evidence and the behaviors of the Zodiac Killer in these ways, because it turns out that you might find a different level of understanding. But another one that was listed on this was the Zodiac wanted to terrorize the community. Well, the Zodiac definitely did that. The Zodiac made threats. The Zodiac killer made claims that he was going to detonate a bomb or he's going to attack school children. He definitely did those things. I mean, the Zodiac definitely murdered women as well. Did the Zodiac hate women? Well, he definitely killed women. Did the Zodiac terrorize the community? Yes. But still, was that the primary function? The primary function, I believe, was more about trying to commit... Um, well, this, this image of uh, self-importance. And the Zodiac was seeking revenge against the police was the lowest voted one at 7% on the Nancy Drew poll. And I just think there isn't sufficient evidence to say that that was the primary motive. Now, some people think that the Zodiac killer was a cop and he was pretending to dislike the police. But did the Zodiac killer openly express a certain uh, disdain for the police? Yes, he referred to them as blue meanies frequently. He referred to them as pigs, and he just openly said that he did not like police. I mean, that's what that stuff means when you refer to um, the police as pigs or blue meanies. And he's also talking about how he's playing a game of cat and mouse with the police, and he's trying to outsmart them. The Zodiac did not like police officers, but that doesn't mean necessarily that he was using that as his primary motive. I mean, you'd think that if the, the primary motive was to attack well, I got ahead of myself. If the primary motive was hatred of the police, well, why wouldn't he just focus on attacking police officers? Why attack people parked in cars in secluded areas? Why would he attack Paul Stein, a taxi driver, when he could have gone after someone in a different way? And I'll share something about the murder of Brian McDonnell later on in this episode. He was a man who was killed in the Park Street bombing the Park Station bombing, excuse me. And the Zodiac Killer openly denied that he was the person responsible for that when he said that, I hope you, you don't think I'm the one who wiped out the blue meanie with a bomb at the police station. I'm paraphrasing. But it, even though there's more glory in killing a cop than killing a kid because a cop can shoot back, it just wouldn't do to move in on someone else's territory. Okay, so that means he hates cops, and he doesn't even want to be near a police station, in my own interpretations of that. But you guys can feel free to weigh in on what you think. And the next one on the list was, the Zodiac was completely crazy. And some people think that the Zodiac was a clinical psychotic. They think the Zodiac was dealing with something like schizophrenia, or that, that his creations were the psycho babble of a madman, somebody who was not able to differentiate between, between fantasy and reality, 
and some of these schizophrenic suspects that get discussed are Richard Kaikowski, Ross Sullivan, and Ted Kaczynski. But what is your response to this challenge question? Why did the Zodiac Killer do what he did? And to hear some different takes on the subject, I would like to go to a comment that was left on my recent Zodiac Monday episode from the Anthony R. R. Mills show, who Ted talked about this type of discussion that I was having on that week's Zodiac Monday, where I asked the question to you guys on from uh, from a, a request from via the email address blackboxonlineradio at aol dot com, and it was should the Zodiac be viewed more as a terrorist rather than a serial killer? And the Anthony R. R. Mills show writes. In reference to the challenge question at the end of the video, the difference between serial killers and terrorists is that terrorists have a particular social or political agenda and use their terrorist acts as an advertisement to either garner support or sow terror in what they perceive to be enemies. The victims of the terrorists might be random people such as the victims of 9-11, or they can be specific individuals whom terrorists see as the enemy that could be the leader of the nation or the minister of the interior or a policeman. But the purpose of the acts of terrorism is to overthrow a government or change a system or sow chaos amongst the ruling elites or get confederates out of prison. Now, I'm not an expert on what motivates serial killers, but I think that most of us casually look at the phenomena and see men, typically white men, but not always, for who for some reason are motivated with killing other individuals, often women, often women of a lower socioeconomic status or prostitutes, or they could just be young women having fun with their boyfriends in a lover's lane. Sometimes they are abused before being killed. Other times they are perhaps shot from a distance, and while this may create some general terror in the community, such as in the Zodiac case or the Son of Sam case, those killers did not issue a manifesto calling for societal or political change, such as what the Unabomber did. If a serial killer does communicate with the media or the police, it's more to call attention to their deeds, perhaps for a need of self-aggrandizement. It can be to overthrow the investigators off by including some accurate information as well as inaccurate information. Those are my two cents. I may explore that question, but more, in the future on my own channel, but in the meantime, I catch everything that you publish and really enjoy it. Thank you so much. Anthony R. R. Mills, I really appreciate that comment. But if we were to use Anthony's definition of a terrorist, someone who isn't only trying to commit murders, but also to do so for a political or social reason, then the Zodiac would not meet the definition of being a terrorist. In the past on the channel, the definition that I have used is that a terrorist is simply someone who wants to create and share the image of terror. And there's some talk about this here, sowing uh, chaos amongst the system. But also, I mean, Anthony had some very specific uh, points there. So I think that both of these are defendable definitions. And again, if we were to use his uh, definition, then the Zodiac isn't so much focused on terrorism because you look at somebody like the previously mentioned Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, so many things in Ted Kaczynski's plan were about drawing attention to his political or social ideas and his whole ideas for industrial society and its future. And he had a manifesto. He perhaps wrote one of the most famous criminal manifestos. And Ted Kaczynski, of course, does go on to become a, Unabom a, a Zodiac killer suspect. The Unabomber is a Zodiac killer suspect. But there are some genuine differences between the Zodiac killer and the Unabomber. And I think a lot of that relates to how the Zodiac is really just trying to create this image of terror for his own selfishness. Maybe we can all agree upon that. The Zodiac isn't exactly drawing attention to how... Um, the environment needs to be protected or something like that, or about how industrial society is creating an abusive culture in some way. No, the Zodiac is saying that he wants to kill people because he wants to get away with it. He wants to kill people because he is smart and clever and cunning and ruthless, and he is superior to the people that he is terrorizing. And that's my take on the subject. As far as um, a contrasting point, there is one that was respond a response to that um, discussion that was on from a previous Zodiac Monday that was written by Sam Fisher, who is the author of the Zodiac Killer Identity. And Sam Fisher says. I think the Zodiac Killer belongs more to a terrorist rather than a serial killer, being that the primary reason was for attention and a few other things which he indicates as an act of terrorism, a serial killer and a terrorist. Good question to ask, though, on this episode. And 
you might be thinking, well, okay, a, a terrorist is someone who tries to sow the image of terror into um, a system or a society or into a group in, or just it through the media in some way. Wouldn't all serial killers be trying to sow the image of terror if they're murdering people? And I think not because, and no, Sam Fisher didn't say that, but I think not because so many serial killers operate in the shadows. So many serial killers operate behind closed doors and they don't even want to broadcast their plans to the world. They don't even want to share their types of destructive behaviors to anybody other than the victims before the victims are murdered. And I think there's a very strong reason for that, that their primary function is killing. Whereas I think that even though this sounds absolutely twisted, I think the Zodiac Killer's primary function was attention and to um, to fuel his own excitement. Now, I could be completely wrong about that, and let's look at something different, because there are other types of theorists out there, and one of them is Jack Myers, who's the author of The Son of Zodiac, where he talks about how there could have been a filming process or that the, some of the Zodiac Killer's crimes were filmed, particularly the Lake Berryessa stabbing, because it was a snuff film where there's some type of erotic reason why these murders were being filmed on videotape. And that would have absolutely, absolutely nothing to do with any of those challenge questions. Terrorism, or egoism, or just some type of... um some type of hatred of police officers. Instead, that would be primarily a sexual a sexual component. And Manny Grossman, using his undercurrents page, responded to that comment that I was dealing with on the most recent Zodiac Killer News report. And he said, Thanks for the shout-out, Ned. The tendency of conspirators to constantly talk about CP and snuff films is something I noticed almost 30 years ago. CP is um, just something very bad involving children and imagery. It was the biggest aspect of the Son of Sam case that left me the most uncomfortable, mainly because it forced me to wallow in a topic that I personally find detestable and want no part of, and also because part of me, a skeptical Maury fan, referring to Maury Terry, author of The Ultimate Evil, never thought that the whole snuff film and child trafficking to Untermeyer network fit into the crimes of David Berkowitz. But to this day, even in the face of all of this huge first-hand evidence in my video series I'm covering about how Maury lied, people still post crap on Facebook about child trafficking rings and parties at Roy Cohn's house with underage boys when talking about Berkowitz. This is the main reason why I consider myself a lone wolf in the true crime world. I want no part of these people's sick fantasies and about how the world really works. And of course... I got a first-hand taste of this because as soon as my series got popular, the usual idiots connected me with North Fox Island because some sicko had the last name as me. Now all of a sudden I have a low info I have low info troglodytes and mouth breathers telling me about my father's history as the head of Operation Mockingbird. It's a crazy town out there. Thanks for keeping it real, Ned. And uh, yes, Manny, thank you for that response. Now. These types of theories involving snuff film and child trafficking go so far beyond the Zodiac Killer mystery. Manny brings up a very good point about how they exist on the Son of Sam case, perhaps even to a greater extent. But the real issue is that some people have this worldview where there are these elites that are trying to destroy the world, and they do that through abusing children and abusing people, particularly women, but sometimes men. I mean, sometimes men in a different way. And it, they, they murder them, they're videotaping them, they film these murders, and they distribute them as a type of blackmail scheme. And it goes so far even beyond serial killers, because there was this very uh, widely discussed conspiracy theory back in the 1980s, that the former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger was abusing boys in a place called the Carlisle Hotel. And one of the biggest challenges to that was, okay, Henry Kissinger was the busiest man in the world. He didn't even have time to have lunch at the Carlisle Hotel, let alone, let alone doing anything involving sex crimes. But, I mean, I want to be clear, Henry Kissinger 
did a lot of destructive things, whether you say good or bad, justifiable or unjustifiable. He did a lot of destructive things, but we don't have to get into some type of political foreign policy rant. The whole point is that these types of theories formulate very easily because people zone in on a target. They zone in on a particular story, and then they add in this element of how the global elites are trying to destroy people, and then one of the ways that they do it is by pulling people into their own world through a blackmail scheme where they have to watch these videos of people being murdered, and they turn them into accessories and accomplices. So... I think that it's one of the ways in which people can understand tragedy and deal with it in a more emotional way, or as Manny pointed out in the comment I discussed in a previous episode, also there might be some of their own perversions that exist within them, some of their own bizarre sexual tendencies come to light in these theories. But if we examine something that is just going to be very basic, very general and very um, focused on the Zodiac Killer, and perhaps even David Berkowitz, the son of Sam Shooter, has to be phrased in my own question to you. Where is the evidence of this type of elite mastermind circle? Where is the evidence of that? Because I'm not seeing it. And this goes so far beyond Alex Jones, because Alex Jones would simply talk about how there's this cabal of individuals that are running the world, and they want to they want to destroy humanity by maintaining power over them but i think the people who are very much involved with these types of sex film and snuff film conspiracy theories don't necessarily view the world that way it's more that they just accept that their ideas are on the side of goodness and they are also using these stories to fuel their own sense of self-importance like they know the truth and no one else is therefore they need to get people to listen to them and it turns almost into like a manipulative game about how they can just share these wild stories and this isn't even my own observation somebody posted this in a group called the zodiac killer library when they were saying that what all what happens a lot of the time with these conspiracy theorists who are trying to connect the Zodiac Killer to the global elites, or the Zodiac to some type of sex ring, or the Zodiac to some type of bizarre set of rituals is, they never get to the point. They don't just tell you what their theory is. They don't just tell you who was involved. They export large chunks of language that you have to pick apart. Large chunks of language that you have to try and decode on your own. And in some ways, the Zodiac Killer did the same stuff, you know, just kind of rambling on about when I die, I'll be reborn in paradise, and those who I have killed will be my slaves. Never really sharing anything that would actually lead to solving the case or b revealing his identity. But um, I think everyone who has left some comments on that particular subject, and I also want to give other people a chance to share their Zodiac Killer theories on Black Box Online Radio. And one of them is Ray Penrod, whom I've been corresponding with a little bit. We still haven't been able to do an off-the-air interview where I just flat-out told Ray he can just tell me the points that he wants shared about his Zodiac Killer suspect, Richard Ralph Mangan. And I did get some more info about a particular story and it related to something that Ray had left in the comment section on BBO War, and that was that his Zodiac suspect, Richard Ralph Mangan, was also guilty of another crime, a, another double homicide. He just calls it the San Rafael double homicide. And the story is that he was walking past a house, and he heard two women say something, and he thought they were laughing at him. So he went home to get a gun, and he came back and shot both of them, and that was ultimately what led to his capture. I would like to read something that Ray Penrod has authored for Black Box Online Radio. He said his paperwork said that Ralph Mangan had just gotten out of a state hospital because maybe it was in Napa, and that is where he wanted to go. Now, he was around 20 years, wherever it was, he was also only out for six months and was walking in San Rafael, close to his place of residence. He thought two ladies sitting on a porch were laughing at him, 
and went back home to get a gun and went back and shot them and went back home. The police set up a manhunt and stopped his Rivera, Riviera, excuse me, Riviera, running his license and plate on it and found out that he just got out and found the gun. The Riviera might be the same one that he had traded in for the Buick Electra because of the rolling speedometer that just came with the same 455 Wildcat and possibly 69 or 70. His paperwork said that he changed his name from Rick or Richard to Ralph. They were looking for a guy named Rick driving an Electra, not a guy named Ralph driving a classy Riviera. At the end of the first conversation between my ex cellmate giving me the heads up, he cupped his mouth and said, he's the Zodiac, doing all this right in front of him. And that shares some details about a possible Zodiac crime, the San Rafael double homicide, and I would have to learn about that more and what um, Ray uh, really thinks about this. And as I understand, the, th the stories of Richard Ralph Mangan are recollections that Ray Penrod and another person from San Quentin Prison had about Richard Ralph Mangan. And there is someone out there named Ralph Mangan who has a very similar appearance, and I'm beginning to start to think that they're actually different people because, well, they have different dates of birth, according to um, the story shared by Ray Penrod, and also that um, it, I just don't see how the Ralph Mangan, who, whom I read the obituary from on the air, would have been in a state hospital for 20 years and then released and only out for six months and then goes back for another extended period of time for the San Rafael double homicide. Perhaps it's a different person, but there's a Ray Penrod's theory is another very clear case where somebody just needs to get to the point. And Ray Penrod has a final comment about his Zodiac suspect, Richard Ralph Mangan, and it relates to the Zodiac killer's final crime, the murder of Paul Stein, the taxi driver, on October 27th. I'm sorry, October 12th of 1969. I was thinking of the Halloween card once again. But um, the quotation that has been shared by Ray Penrod is, He killed Paul Stein because he knew he was Jewish and would be alone. He was a conservationist, but he didn't want to cause attention and poor judgment because of hard alcohol. Two parts there. Firstly, the second part, no idea what that means. First part, he killed Paul Stein because he knew Paul Stein was Jewish. I have to take a very strong stance against this. We do not know what the Zodiac killer was doing in Paul Stein's taxi cab. We don't know if the Zodiac was completely silent during the ride. We don't know if the Zodiac was having an extended conversation with Paul Stein. Did the Zodiac truly know that Paul Stein was Jewish? Or what, was it unbeknownst to him? So I always hold back those things, those types of theories where Paul Stein was specifically targeted because he was Jewish. I mean, I just don't see how we have enough certainty to say that. I mean, did the Zodiac say that in a letter? Yeah, I killed Paul Stein because he was Jewish. Here's um, his driver's license or something like that. I don't think that we have anything of the sort. But what do you guys think? Um... Do you believe that Paul Stein, the taxi driver, was murdered because he was Jewish and it was a hate crime? Now, the next comment comes to us from Profound Will, who says something about a newer a Zodiac killer suspect whom I've only learned about recently, and his name is Loringdale Hill, also known as L.D. Hill. He was commonly known as L.D. Hill in his daily life. And Profound Will says, the L.D. Hill theory is very interesting from how you described it. If he was the killer and responsible for the boat fire on the USS Enterprise in 1969 and also investigated by the Navy, that would make sense why he only left a subtle clue and didn't brag about it like the other murders. And the subtle clue would be the Tim Hold Wheel of Death that was sent in on the Halloween card that says, by rope, by knife, by gun, by fire, and it's purely an observation that has been made by Thornton Daniel Jeffrey and Melissa Rose Tappa, which is that... The Zodiac was alluding to the fire on the USS Enterprise, where uh, 28 servicemen lost their lives, and could he have been responsible for them? Was he trying to leave some type of hint or clue? And I do think that there is a certain element of promise with L.D. Hill as a Zodiac suspect. I think he had the brain for it. 
I think that he had the time frame that matches up. He was a naval aviation mechanic, a former helicopter pilot, also a um, pilot who did rescue missions, like emergency rescue. So he would have had all of the types of knowledge that we see in the Zodiac Killer case, cutting off a piece of Paul Stein's shirt for practicality. That's been discussed by with other Zodiac suspects that that's what a medic or a rescue worker would do. Or how about just um how about just being familiar with radians and inches along the radians using some of the zodiac's esoteric language being a naval aviation mechanic and helicopter pilot i mean he would have that particular type of mindset not to mention creating ciphers in general i mean talking about coding from the navy all types of things show that it's quite possible that the zodiac was either in the navy or the air force or another branch of the military and um, these things are, I, they are widely discussed, but we're, we have to do a lot more than just say, well, you know, he um, he was in the Navy, and he matches some of the physical descriptions, and he would have been familiar with all the stuff the Zodiac talked about. We have to do more than that. We also need things like DNA, fingerprints, maybe a possession of a particular artifact or a piece of evidence that would incriminate him and show that he was indeed the Zodiac Killer. And I would like to go to another comment from a previous Zodiac um, Monday, and it's someone says, named NKB, who says, I believe that the Zodiac is Paul Alfred Doer. He is a huge suspect, and he died in 2007. Can I be very honest with you guys? I rarely hold back what I genuinely think about the Zodiac case or other true crime stories. And... Paul Doerr is the suspect of Jared Kobeck, who wrote the book How to Find Zodiac, as well as the book Motor Spirit, about the 1960s. And to be 100% honest, I read both of those books. I did episodes about them on Black Box Online Radio, and I don't remember anything about them. I mean, it's just kind of garbage in, garbage out. It's like writing on water. I don't remember any of the real strong points. It's just kind of like, well, yeah, some clever wordplay. And then, poof, gone. Sayonara. And I also think that um, there's a reason for that. And it is that it's just... It's just wordplay. It's a piece of creative writing. This narrative that's been made by Jared Kobach against Paul Doerr, and I know that's being dismissive. I know that's not the hard evidence that I was just talking about. But you can also weigh things in terms of interpretation, such as stating that one of the claims that did come from Jared Kobach about Paul Doerr is he believed that the Zodiac Killer's hood at Lake Berryessa was not from the Black Velvet Mask, that it wasn't a Spanish caperote, that it wasn't a welder's hood, it wasn't from the Mikado. He believed that it was something that was worn for a Renaissance fair. It was supposed to be an executioner's hood that was worn for a nearby Renaissance fair. And I just think that the costume is way too plain for that. I think that the costume is way too basic and simple. But I could be completely wrong about that. Maybe Paul Dover was indeed the Zodiac. It's just... um. Let's just say it's still a mystery. Now, somebody asked a question, though, about prime suspect Arthur Lee Allen. And this comes to us from Anton. And he stated that, Did Arthur Lee Allen sue Robert Graysmith for writing about him in the book Zodiac? Now, my honest answer is, I don't know. But I don't think he would have been able to do that for the following reason, that when Zodiac came out, Arthur Lee Allen was referred to as Robert Hall Star. He was given a pseudonym for the specific reason that Graysmith did not want to be sued by Arthur Lee Allen. And in Zodiac Unmasked, then Arthur Lee Allen's name is revealed, but Zodiac Unmasked was written well after Arthur Lee Allen had passed away in 1992. So I don't think that he would have been able to do that. And also, also even if he had sued him, it is my understanding with the law that you have to prove intent. You have to prove that someone was trying to say bad things about you solely to 
tarnish your reputation. Let's say, for example, a guy named um, Robert Graysmith writes a book about Arthur Lee Allen being the Zodiac Killer. If you actually believe that Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac Killer, then he might not, Lee Allen might not be able to claim anything in the lawsuit. And even though I'm not a lawyer, I understand that there are certain mechanics of the law that happen where some people might just, you know, not go through with publishing a book because they don't want to deal with the legal battle. They might get stuck in a courtroom battle that could last years and tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees. But also that you have to prove intent. You have to prove that someone was directly and intentionally lying to discredit someone else's reputation. But um, that's ultimately uh, my take on that and the way that I will end the episode. Thank you so much to everyone who provided questions and comments for this episode of Black Box Online Radio Zodiac Monday. One more time, you can hit the like button and subscribe, and you can always visit some of the links in the description box. And feel free to write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And there is always BlackBoxNid88 on Instagram. And I will see you there for the bonus podcast. Good.